Good morning, everybody. I'm Go Here, Go Home. Welcome to the Sunday Brunch Kit Builds. Every Sunday, we show up, we work on some kits, we do some graffiti and some weathering, maybe even work on the layout. Uh, but today, 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 we're continuing on with this build. And uh, for the last seven weeks, I built it, I've primed it, I've painted it, and now I got more work to do. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it's you know it's more than just a uh, you know one color, and then there you go, you know kind of situation. So we're going to do some work on this and um, add a little bit of detail to it because that would be fun. Uh, this is the Merchants Row number two. This is from Walters. Uh, okay. Um, I love my Walther's kits. The plastic is very easy to work with. And the instructions are easy to read. There's not much to this. It's basically just a back, front, side. Uh, the trickiest part was this rounded kind of, um, I don't know what you'd call that. It's like a balcony, but not a balcony. It's a, I don't know. I don't know what you'd call it. But um, yeah, that was the toughest part because that's like five pieces and you have to glue them going in like a, you know, half circle and then glue it to the building. But uh, other than that, yeah, there wasn't much to it. And then of course the roof pieces, which I have not added yet. So uh, I'm going to finish painting this, doing the detail, and then we'll take a look at uh, maybe the interior and possibly what we can do. Because I do plan on lighting up all my buildings using the Woodland Scenics light system, the just plug system. And uh, if you did catch my layout update, you'll exactly where this building is going and all the light can be uh, located in that area. So I'm very excited to start bringing that side of my, uh, my upper level uh, to, uh, to life and start adding a lot uh, more buildings and scenery as we go. Uh, you ever have those days where you're like, okay, so I have to order this and this and this and this, and then you find those parts in, in one of the boxes that that was today um always take inventory <laughs> of your stuff and all of your um parts i keep a i usually keep a bits box which is a it's almost like a three or tupperware uh, and i keep all my spare parts in there sprues uh, etc i've got this uh, this is the uh, the base here for the uh, the building, but I've added a lot to this. So originally, it's just this here, right? From like here to here, and then from here to here. But a sidewalk coming down the side here, I've extended it out. And then uh, I've also put a back somewhat parking lot-ish area and then the uh, the way the curb goes and uh, this goes right down to the road itself the road level so this will extend the sidewalk i can probably put maybe like a bike rack a telephone booth or something here just to kind of fill this out but i do want to put like a lamp post and stuff as well so i thought out of curbs and uh, sidewalk well Upon doing some fishing last night, I found some curbs and some sidewalks. So nice. So I'm very happy about that. And I'm going to see what I can do about uh, possibly expanding and having this kind of connect. And I want to like have a little alleyway here coming down to the back. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. And uh, once this is done, when this whole plate it's like a giant plate it goes right onto the layout um, you can kind of see here the stairs the stair section is right here and it comes down to here so you go up to the um i guess that would be an exit only but for the uh elevated um station platform so this is like the exit here and then my retaining wall comes out to here and then goes across so that is all locked off right along here so it's a very narrow back alley which you can add like garbage bins and maybe a parking spot back there some overgrown weeds and stuff as well 
which I'll get to eventually. But uh, I do have uh, lots of lands for this, and uh, this is just the starting of it. So we have to work on that too. But before we get started, of course, I do want to say hi to everybody who uh, had the time to show up today for the uh, Sunday brunch kit build. Uh, we have okay. Um, Mark M M Rails was the first one here. He beat out Wigwag. Uh, doesn't happen too often, but when it does, dang. <laughs> uh, we got Bernard from Mini Prince and Anthony Borden. How's it going, Anthony? And Trackside Mike, keeping it all the tracks. <laughs> That's right. Mike is here, and so is Bubs. Hey, Bubs. So just spoke not too long ago. He is trackside, so hopefully uh, we can catch some live freight today on the uh, brunch build. Uh, maybe even a passenger train, who knows? Uh, so stick around for that, and I'm sure that uh, he will jump on eventually when he hears the sound of uh, rolling thunder. And then hopefully he'll be able to share that with us as well. Uh, Mom and Son Train Rail fans, how's it going? Thanks for joining today. And David Atkins, how's it going? How's it going? All right, so uh, what I'm going to do, like I normally do, I forgot to put the link, copy. Uh, I forgot to put the link into the chat so that when Bubs, here's a train, you can jump on and share it. Hopefully it's a V. <laughs> Almar, how's it going? Thanks. For joining and now if you do want to join uh and you want to jump up you're more welcome to um we're talking trains and such today and uh i'm building this kit so i think before i get my paintbrush paintbrush wet uh i'm going to finish this part here and i'm going to get the curb right along there and I am going to maybe add that sidewalk way and I'm gonna sorry about that guys all right there we go uh, how do I... it's like somebody moved my camera when it wasn't looking okay so let's see here so let's remove it now um, everybody knows we're watching the Sunday brunch kit bill there we go. Okay. So, um, I'm, I'm glad that I have these curbs because, 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 uh, that means that I don't have to order more. I mean, I probably will eventually. But. Did y'all get to see uh, Tim's birthday special on Thursday? So cool. He's doing lots of cool graffiti. And I know he has some really cool projects that are on the go. And uh, I'm very excited to see everything that he has talked to me about. So you all should get excited because uh, it's going to be real cool. And I say that because I already know, but I'm not telling. That's not for me to tell. I'm gonna let him do all that. Uh, let's see here. So I'm just gonna take these last piece here off. Because then this can go in recycle and these can all go into my bits box. They're just, it's a round curb and this is the corner so I don't have too many uh, street corners on this section here. So I'll be able to maybe repurpose that later, maybe create uh, something else with it. And of course it also gives you little fire hydrants, which, which is neat, uh, sewer grates, and also um, sewer caps for like the middle of the road as well. What's that? I don't know what that is. 
Yeah, well. I'm sure it's important. But I just need the curb for now. So for these pieces, you can see these are the curbs here, not much to it, but it uh, what it does, and typically you have, this is the road that it comes with as well, it's just, or sidewalk, you just cap it like that, and then you glue it, and then there you go, right? That's, that's your sidewalk with your curb, and then you can replace pieces of curb, I'm sure, with the... Uh, sewer grate and whatnot, but I'm not going to bother doing that right now because adding a whole sewer system, I don't know. <laughs> it's detail for sure, but I'm, oh, I feel like I'm going to add that later. Um, so yeah, with this here, with the way this platform is, it comes with a sidewalk going around the corner. So that's why I extended it out this way. So it's twice as wide now, which is cool. But with the front here, there's not really a curb. So I'm going to just glue curb right to the front of that. And then I just continue it right along. And uh, that way it all stays at the same level. And then it'll all get painted as one piece. And then I'll be able to do all the little deals. Uh, this way, also, if I move, or when I move, I should say, because it's undoubtedly going to happen at some point, uh, basically, I'll be able to lift up this whole section and then basically take it with me. And then I can always repurpose this whole little street section at some point down the road. So the reason why I'm building it like this, uh, you know, not painting the parts and then gluing them, because it glues way better uh, when it's plastic to plastic. So if I do all the plastic gluing, it'll all be one piece, and then I can just paint the whole thing all at once, and uh, it'll work out a lot better. It'll hold up a lot. And uh, yeah, it's just easier to work with. And also a bit of an update for you guys. Uh, if you did see my last layout update, you guys had seen that I was thinking about uh, taking my one, uh, it's not really, it wasn't really a, well, it's part partly a yard. And uh, the other part was like maintenance area. And basically because the area is so, uh, I want to say it's relatively big, but I mean, because they're both areas share the space, it's like less for each area. So what I'm going to do is, or what I have done, because I talked about it, I said I was going to remove one of my ladders to extend the yard, the complete length. So it was going from about being a foot and a half to two feet long, it went up to like 10 feet. And I've already started working on all that and uh, pretty happy with how it's turning out so far. Looks good. So look for an update on that in the near future which might actually be Thursday, because I've got a live to do Thursday. It's my third rail Thursday this week. 
which is ironically enough also my birthday. Well, my birthday's Wednesday, but I'll celebrate it on Thursday. That way I have people to celebrate it with. So there's a little bit of a lip there. So what I'm doing is I just, I removed the lip so that I can just attach all this together. And that should work. My cat's calling me. Okay. So I do have to lift up this a tiny bit just to level it out with everything here, which is totally fine, but uh, it's something that I can work out here. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Anthony's asking, uh, I noticed you guys love Helix on your layouts, but I have a question. How can you run long cars such as 86 foot box cars and passengers and other long cars without problems? You guys don't like hidden yards. Um, uh, okay, so for the helix, when you're running big cars, and I mean, I've got auto racks, I've got passenger cars, um, yeah, like I've got some fairly long cars, um, I don't have any of the long box cars or anything, but I, uh, I gotta make sure when, when building the helix, that it's a smooth transition. So like when you're going around, it can't be, you know, jerky. It has to be a smooth curve. Also, you want to make sure that depending on how big of a radius or how small of a radius, if you've got an inside track, you got to make sure that there's enough clearance between two tracks for a long car or passenger train to go around on the outside and on the inside without touching each other, because that would be an issue. So, my chair is really squeaky today. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm sure Mark will make a meme about it. I bet he's already doing it. He's doing it right now. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, the trick is, like, have a big radius. Um, if, if you can accommodate for it, then then I would recommend to try to make it as large as you can. And then, unfortunately, like scale back from there if, if necessary. So I wanted to shoot for a 36 inch radius on the outside. And uh, I only have a five by, no, six by six. So it wouldn't allow it, it would hang over that. So I had to go like a little bit smaller and then I did, uh, because it is such a big radius, I only had to go two inch uh, a track, like, a, you know, spacing uh, in order for long and short cars to make it through there without there being any sort of uh, complications. <laughs> you guys <laughs> and 
pretty sure he meant you guys with helixes. We want Mark to have a helix. And you know what? If if having a helix with longer cars is a you know is an issue, don't run a double track. Just do a single track. Mm, how do I do that? It's seriously the chair, Mark. <laughs> Don't roast me today. Today is not my day to be roasted. Hey, Bradley, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Now, also what I'm going to do, because I can, um, because it's not painted and uh, I'm gluing it from the top here, what I'm going to do is once that glue dries or it, it's welded up at that point, I can um, also add a bit of glue onto the bottom as well. And that should help to hold the whole thing. Hey, Steve, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. Um, Bubs wants me to send him the link. I think I can do it through email here, uh, Bubs. I think I can. These are the things I don't um, pre-prepare for. Prepare, pre prepare. Okay, so we want to send an email. Fun. Okay. Probably won't see this part anyway, so okay. So we want to uh, Bob's I'm gonna email you the link. I think that would be easier. Okay, Bubs, I've emailed it to you. It should be in your email, in your inbox. Uh, 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 um. <laughs> if Heath can have a model railroad empire of three scales in a closet and a studio, I think you can do amazing. Oh, it went away. You can do amazing something. Do amazing things with your space. Uh, but I don't 
but don't the helix take up much space away from your other parts of your layout? For scenery, I have in my space for uh, tracks, main line, so I don't know how to put a second tier to space a helix. I'd have to see what that looks like. The biggest problem that I had was space and uh, the amount of space to run trains. Uh, passenger trains, I mean, even freight, like freight, you can run crazy long freight trains, but you can also run short, you know, passenger trains. The, the problem is, is that most people who run a lot of trains, you know, once you get a taste of running a small train, that's fine. But then you get into running the big trains and you're like, oh, I want to run bigger trains and even bigger trains. So then becomes the uh, grueling battle of trying to be able to fit an even longer train into a small space. And, uh, you know, eventually the 4 by 8 layout uh, becomes more of a, you know, your the front end of your locomotive is touching the back end of your locomotive, if that makes sense. You know, you're chasing your own tail at that point. So, yeah, it does become... Uh, a little challenging at that point to be able to decide what to do. So with me, uh, what I had to do was I had to build a helix because the only way I would have gotten a longer run is if I went through a wall, which I know a lot of my uh, <laughs> viewers out there and uh, friends alike uh, would often suggest, hey, why don't you just put a hole in the wall? <laughs> um no, I can't. I can't just put a hole in the wall. Uh, thank you, Bubs. But, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, like if I built this house, absolutely. There'd be like holes in every wall and the train would be upstairs and in the garage and it would go out, cut grass for me. And absolutely. Shovel of snow. And... But unfortunately, that's not realistic. It's not realistic in the sense where, you know, I got to make it fit into a room. It's got to stay in a room. So if I can't go, you know, left to right, the only room left for me to go is up. So a helix uh, ideally would be, yes, I'm taking up a six by six section. But what would go in that six by six section? A loop, uh, the reverse loop to send it back the other way. So really, I'm not losing anything there because all that loop is doing now is going up to add a lengthier run to it. And in my case, it goes up two levels so that I've got three times the amount of running space. That's how I look at it anyways. Not everybody will see it like that, but that's how I, I look at it. My only uh, issue with my layout that I find that um, when it comes to doing multiple levels is that if you don't have enough room between your bottom level and the starting of your level above it, it makes it really difficult to get that work done in that area, especially if it's a deep section, like where my yard is, it's a three foot wide or three feet deep section with a two foot deep section right above it. And, and it's about, I don't know, it's probably about 12, 12 inches above it. <laughs> so, you know, unless you've got tiny hands uh, or you can squeeze in there and, and work at the back with some long arms or something, then it's going to make it really difficult to do work in that area. And for me, that's kind of the case. So I really wish that I gave myself a bit more and then that way, I could actually, you know, get more into the area. Also trees, because trees are only so tall. When I'm putting trees on my second level, they're going up into the bench work of my third level. And it's like, ah, it's too tall. <laughs> so it happens. Hey, Trackside Mike with the donation. Birthday cake this Thursday for everyone on the GBO show. Happy birthday, Chris. Well, thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Uh, makes getting older a little less scary. <laughs> and there will be cake. There's always cake. Um, 
yeah, so this this is my this is my uh, this is yeah the, this is the base here. This is the front, so I'm going to show you. This is how this goes, and this is the amount of space that this will take up once I put it where it needs to go. Oh, why is it going there? Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's that's technically it there. So you can see. You've got lots of room here. I'm probably going to put a payphone or something down the side, uh, maybe some bike racks, or even a telephone booth like right here, maybe newspaper stands, something like that. Um, I've got a few things from mini prints that I do want to add there. And I think a payphone is one of those things. So that'll be cool. Uh, and then, you know, just decorate it up, make it look a little bit more realistic, have those little details. I'm sure a little bicycle rack, uh, Walters has little detail parts like that. And all I got to do is paint it up and glue it here and put the little bicycles in. And uh, there you go, right? So that's neat. And uh, because this is not part of the layout, I can also drill out where lamp posts can go and whatnot and um, do all that off the layout and then feed all the wiring through. It's a good thing that uh, there's a giant hole right in the middle as well, because uh, it'll allow me to put all my wiring inside here and do all the decorating, and then just drop the wires through, drill a couple of holes. And yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. Doing this takes forever, <laughs> but you gotta have patience, right? And I'll turn this thing around so that you can see the back. There's not much space on the back side of this. And you probably will never see the back side of this because it's that's just how it is. It's the back of the building, you know? Um, but it's like an alleyway. So, you know, what will you find along the alleyway there? I don't find that I would be doing as much detail stuff back here, but uh, anywhere that you can see or anywhere where there's light uh, I can definitely add a bit of detail for sure. So uh, I'm just going to add a bit more glue to this. And I already know what I'm going to put in the building next to it. So that's that's going to be interesting, which I will probably order that stuff soon because I'm almost done this kit. And I'm going to need more kits to work on for Sundays. And uh, don't worry, we'll be doing a, another group build soon where we all get the same kit and uh, work on it together. You work on it, I work on it, and we all do a different version of the one kit. It's fun to do. We did that prior. Um, not, not sure what kit is yet, but uh, I don't know if you guys had seen the like, latest announcements from Walther's, but Walther's announced a chocolate factory. That chocolate factory is looking pretty good. So I don't know, might have to build a chocolate factory. <laughs> and that, that's expected at some point uh, in the summer as well. So who knows, might do a, a group build like, you know, once or twice a year, maybe come more depending on the size of the kit. I know that these uh, kits themselves, they get rather pricey, so I don't want uh, to, you know, burden you guys with going out and buying kits. If I go buy a kit, that's fine. But like I said, at some point, I'd like to build a kit that you guys pick. So you guys pick a kit. I build, paint it and whatnot live, and then I give it away to somebody who needs a kit. <laughs> and I'll, I'll send it out to you. So that'd be fun. For me, that's fun anyways. And it's great content, let's be honest. <laughs> Everybody likes some decent content. So I've got these uh, concrete pieces here. And I'm using a oldish concrete color to detail. I'm 
You know what it is? I've got like this giant Adidas logo on the side of my sweater, and that that vinyl is rubbing up against the pleather on the see on the chair, and that's what's making that sound. I regret wearing this sweater now. That's fine. <laughs> Chemical distribution. Chemical distribution. Uh, I got. I got to. I got to think on that one. Oh, you guys got the chocolate factory. Shoot. Okay. Let's. Yeah. Let's do the. The, the chocolate factory as a group then. Um, if you guys want. Cause. Uh, yeah. You know the funny thing about that kit though. Not a lot of people will notice. But I'm. I. I always notice things like this. Because Walters repurposes their structures and their their kits. So they will take one kit, it's an industry, change a couple of little things about it, and then label it as a different industry. <laughs> so what they did with that chocolate factory is they took one of the ethanol series kits, which comes with two buildings, and one there's a rail to road uh, thing inside the building and um yeah basically they just separated the two instead of making it one building it's bigger and they added like a a tank thing on the side of it i'm assuming for the uh chocolate or cocoa Cocoa. <laughs> yeah, that's all it that's all it is. So I already technically have that kit, but obviously I'm gonna use my um, my ethanol kit as my ethanol kit. I'm not gonna make it a chocolate kit. Uh, all right, Mark, you have yourself a good one. Chicken Big Mac. Seen that. I don't know how I feel. Uh, Chocolate Factory. Sweet. So if that's something that you guys would be interested in, we can all build that kit together when uh, they start coming in, I'm sure. By then, um, we'll all have at least pre-ordered it, and then we'll set a date to start, and then... It also kind of looks like a relatively easy kit to do. The wall, I mean, every one of those kits has, a you know, the four walls and the uh, the base for it, and then the roof. There's not a lot of detail parts to it, except for maybe like the railing, because there's a railing that goes around the, uh, the tank. See, little details. Uh, let's see. Kit build the chocolate factory. Then you will have to get me Prince to do uh, Oompa Loompa. <laughs> Probably. Oh, puns were definitely intended there. So there's uh, just some concrete work up here. It's like an awning of sorts, but I'm... I'm just gonna paint it the 
this color. It looks really good with the, uh, the red brick. I took some of the Walters kits and kit bashed with some of the Faller kits. Uh, you guys need to check out some of the, the European products also, like Faller and Kirby and Knock. Um, yeah, the uh, well, Faller, I think it's Faller. Faller makes a lot of really good city parts like bus stations and, uh, you know, park park stuff you know like park bench and all that and then Kibri makes some really good cranes I don't know I think I just get so used to the Walther's stuff that you know you just kind of get hooked on it if you guys haven't noticed I'm very brand loyal <laughs> For example, if, uh, I don't know, if one company, I don't know, we'll say, let's say Scale Trains. If Scale Trains came out with the exact same bulkhead flat car that Rapido did, probably wouldn't get it. But because Rapido did it, <laughs> I'm going to get two. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how it is. I don't know. I don't know why, but I think price also pays a, uh, plays a huge part in that. Uh, I've seen some Kibri kits that are really expensive, and then I've seen some, uh, whatchamacallit, Faller stuff. Uh, at first, I'm like, oh, that's really cool, and then I see the price tag, and I'm like, not for that much. But with Walther's, Walther's has always been really, uh, really decent about their prices, you know. But it really depends on the, uh, the actual product itself, right? In this day and age where everything, the price is going up, it's like, can't really, can't really be frugal anymore. I'll have to change the name of the channel to go frugal or go without. <laughs> like I said, there's some things that you can kind of you know, not necessarily cheap out on, but there's uh, less expensive alternatives to a lot of the stuff in the hobby. I envy those who don't need sound coming from a locomotive. <laughs> because if I could just do DC, then it would save a lot of money on locomotives. At least $100 per locomotive. But then knowing me, I'd probably buy more. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> which would equal up. I'm like, well, this was originally $300, but now that it's $100, I'm going to buy three. I did prime it. Yep, that would explain the black paint. Uh, black paint on the inside, back, black paint on the outside. Well, you can kind of see the, the window frames there. That's all black paint that I primed. So I usually either use the white or the black primer. So in this case, I did do a black primer. Absolutely prime your stuff. The paint will adhere better. And it gives it a nicer finished look. A mix of sound and non-sound is good. Yeah. My problem is that when I run DC on a DCC system, it makes it a little bit more difficult because uh, they don't they don't play well together, right? I can't run a DC locomotive on the same track as a DCC. I mean, it says that you can pull it up by zero, zero, right? But it doesn't necessarily mean that you should. A lot of guys I know that run both DCC and DC, they'll have both power packs connected to the overall layout. And, uh, you know, it's a quick switch from one power source to another if you wire it correctly. Uh, so far, still nothing, not even the scanners yet. I'll keep, I'll keep you guys posted. Thanks, Bubs, our correspondent in the field today. Uh, looking for tra trains or treasure, either one. Either one. Just going to show you guys this. It's not much so far, but it does what it needs to do. Um, yeah, this, these window sills here. I'm not eager to do these window sills because they are very small. I feel like I got the shaky hands today. So I'm going to continue doing this and hopefully I can do that at some point next week. I also have another kit here that I'm either going to start on or work on at some point. I, I'm not sure. And then also if the, my next city building, which I do have to order still, that comes in, then I got another kit to do. Also might do the uh, lighting of these buildings. Um, 
live as well so that I can show you guys all the cool benefits of using the just plug system. If you guys have never seen it or used it before, it's one of those things I talk about all the time. Um, well, Anthony, I think it's only open to American residents. It's not open to the Canadians, which, you know, I get it. But uh, at the same time, you know, darn. I think if we did that, it would be not necessarily bragging rights. It would just be a, uh, you know, look what I can do kind of thing. So I have thought about doing it, but then I found out, yeah, it's only for the, uh, for the USA guys. So I'm like, ah, oh. they still allow us to purchase it. Of course, they're not going to say, no, you cannot buy stuff from us. <laughs> Go hang out with your maple syrup. <laughs> no, they're going to say, yeah, absolutely. You can buy this from us, but. As far as the contest goes, mm, no. Let's see if we've got some trains here. And here we have our correspondent in the field, Bub031. Just in time, Bub too, because I got a fast eastbound coming. All right, I'm going to go full screen with you here. Got to get some of those for the layout. Well, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, that seemed like a promo hard. commercial for uh, <laughs> for a repeater there. Buy your bud coaches today. Don't forget to pre-order at your uh, local shop. <laughs> also, P forty two for Mather. Yep. How's the, so, so uh, how's the weather been... out there? Beautiful. Uh, it people is want beautiful to know where you, you are right now. Yep, I can hear you. 
Where where are you? Where are you right now? Uh, I'm uh, down home for the holidays, east of Cornwall. Cornwall, Ontario. Yeah, there was a lot of traffic before the stream, and then when the streams come up, this is the only thing I caught. Now, was that for was that for the uh, via that just went by? Yep. Twenty eight axles. Yep. Neat. Yeah. So, just to give you a heads up, I'm gonna have to get off here in a minute or so, just to save my dad on my truck. But as soon as I hear something else coming, I'll give you guys a heads up. Sounds good. All righty. We'll be around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bubs. That's always fun. And that was our correspondent in the field, Bubs031. He does a lot of rail fanning. I'd like to think he does a lot of rail fanning. He's always out rail fanning, so I think it's safe to say he does a lot. So, So it's very subtle, but it's, uh, you know, it's something. And I wonder, nope, I'll leave all that. But I will do this. I still have to do all the, the washes and whatnot, but that's usually it's one of the last things I do when it comes to something like this, because there's so many other little things that need to be painted. I'll just do the wash over top of it, and then if I have to correct anything, I just do it as a, as a touch-up.
Hey, Kevin, how's it going? Uh, Sean's asking if I'm going to be doing interiors in the building. Uh, absolutely. I've got a few buildings that are all going in the same area, and I do plan on lighting them and putting interiors. Um, but that's all going to happen with, with time. Uh, I've got lights that will be on the way soon because I do want to light up the buildings first and foremost, but I also need to figure out how I'm going to do each room and whatnot. But I'll be sure to do that all here so that you guys can see it. I don't even, like, I haven't even put the glass windows in any of my buildings yet. The, uh, the clear, clear plastic, except for the hobby, the hobby house or the hobby shop. But that's only because it just holds better when it's, uh, when the windows are in there or this one here. You know, they'll, they'll just go in when I'm ready. I also have to figure out what each of these little places are going to be, right? I think that's, uh, that's going to play a huge factor into how I decorate the interiors. Hey, Kyle. How's the random? How's it going? I'm really enjoying doing these uh, brick buildings and these downtown kits. There's endless possibilities with these two, which is great because you don't feel like you're, oh, I have to do it this color or I have to do it that color. No, you can kind of do your own thing here and do what you feel it should look like or look for prototypes or go to the downtown of your area and look for buildings that look similar and get some color ideas, take some pictures and just see if you can replicate. I know usually in the U S shops like this will have little American flags sticking out so i'll be doing something similar because in canada we usually have little canadian flags sticking out everywhere which again walters does both canadian and american flags have the uh, little package thingy where you can get like a whole bunch of flags and flag poles. Sure, you can just make your own, but if you don't have a printer and you're not good with stuff like that, then uh, at least you know you got the option to buy it.
Hey, Chris, how's it going? Osborne also has Canadian flags. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there's never a short supply of manufacturers that make the things that you need, or even things that you didn't know you needed. I know I do a lot of my shopping online, but when you go in store, you tend to find a lot more that you didn't even know were available, right? Because most of the time when, I, when I'm shopping online, I'm shopping via keyword search. So, you know, I'll look up whatever building, or let's see if I'm looking for via rail stuff, I'll type in via rail. But if I didn't know, or if I was I had no idea that the, you know, a company made like uh, Canada flags or whatever, I would never type in Canada flag. And then you see it, and you're like, oh, wow, that's right, I do need candle flags. Now I'm going to change the color on the top of this because I know I have it as white, but I want the face of it to be white, not the top. I want it to be just a concrete color that, in this case, someone has taken the time to paint white over the concrete color just to change the aesthetic of the front of the building. Now, this definitely goes on a little bit easier over the white, but I wasn't about to prime it in five different colors. Now this part here doesn't matter too much. I'm going to paint it anyways because it'll bother me if I don't. But there's a little um, roof piece, this roof piece to be exact, that goes right over top of this, which I have not painted that yet. So I still got to do that. make one of the apartments a drug lab yeah yeah i don't know <laughs> i don't want to have to explain that to my kids when they're like what's going on in there why are all these people on the ground <laughs> they won't stand up right Uh, scanning old railroad photos. 
Ooh, O and R. Nice. I have some pictures of some O and R gondolas that I found out in the wild. That's a. Uh, that's about it as far as O and R photographs that I have. It's uh, it's really weird, you know, like when you have like a model of something, a little HO or N scale something, and then you see the real one and you're like, wow, <laughs> I have you, but in this much smaller scale. You can tell I get out a lot when. Before I miss that and never do it. Here we go. Okay. Uh, Chris, you ever seen the building Small Town USA? Uh, also, uh, custom all railroad building, custom cuts. You probably like this as well. I've heard of it. Um, Small Town USA. He sounds very familiar. I like doing, you know, a lot of different kits. There's actually a kit that I really wanted to get, but I know I wouldn't have any space for on my layout. And uh... oh, my wife's in the chat. Stephanie, shouldn't you be working? <laughs> where do I get that job where I get to sit and watch YouTube all day? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> and I say that because usually while I'm working, someone's usually live and I'm usually watching while I'm working. The joys of working from home. Oh, you're on break and you're, you're taking this time to watch your husband talk about trains neat neat guys don't tell her about the things i purchased <laughs> i mean what that's what she's fishing for she's waiting for me to say so i just purchased this massive locomotive and i know we don't have a backyard but i'm totally going to put it in the backyard I wish I had a yard big enough to do a, uh, what are they called? Like a garden railroad? Even one of those ones where you like, you can actually ride on the train. There's a gentleman out in Southern Ontario who builds uh, the, what would technically be the rolling stock. And he does a really good um, Point St. Charles caboose in CN. And I'm like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't have a, a thing where I could, you know, run that around, but like, it would look so good right out the front there. As my wife is saying, no, that's not going out the front. <laughs> How much did you pay for this? 
money. That's how much I paid. No, I saw I saw the price tag and I was like, oof. Yeah, I'll stick with uh, <laughs> I'll stick with HO. <laughs> HO scale is uh, already pretty expensive. So. Oh, thank you for your support, Stephanie. <laughs> your check's in the mail. <laughs> I got to get her a t-shirt. Not that she wears t-shirts, but... Let me get her a shirt, and then she can wear it out in public. My husband plays with model trains. Uh, let's see. What about hydrocal model kits like downtown? See, I tried downtown deco, and the plastic is, or whatever it is, it's too thick, and I don't like working with it. It's not like it. It's terrible for trying to glue together. It barely welds. Like it's just not. Uh... Yeah, I just I had a terrible time with it. I mean, if you can if you can work with those and you can you know paint and whatnot with those, then all the more to you. But it's yeah, ugh, I was not a fan. And I've tried a couple of different brands, you know, not so much the uh, the wood kits yet. I would like to do an ITLA kit at some point. Uh, just. Trying to justify it, you know, like I try to only buy the kits that I'm going to actually use on the layout, as opposed to me just buying and collecting kits. That's a that's a wigwag thing. Wigwag does that. He'll build kits and he doesn't actually have a layout. He just unless he does have a layout. I don't think he does though. But he just likes building kits, which you know that's awesome in its own way. But I'm starting to do diorams, uh, especially after the whole picture frame thing. I really enjoy doing that. Uh, even my oldest, he wants to learn how to do that as well. So I think at some point, I'm going to get him a little, a little platform thing where he can build a somewhat of a diorama from start to finish. And I'll probably get him to do that here with me and I'll walk him through it. And that'll make for good content. It'll be two minutes of talking about the, the diorama and then about 20 minutes of talking about Fortnite. <laughs> That's okay. It all goes down the same way. If you're meaning some might be missing, that's okay. Call that cake tax. <laughs> cake tax. Uh, peace. Uh, my wife's trying to be funny. She never laughs at my jokes, but that's okay. See, and I had a really good joke the other day, but she's like, don't tell anybody that joke. That's a terrible joke. And I'm like, but it's a train joke. And she's like, no, don't, don't, don't do that. I'm like, fine. But yeah, maybe one day. Maybe one day. I mean, <laughs> well, Chris, uh, 
you know, I trust uh, my wife in the sense where if I've told a joke and she doesn't laugh, that it would have to be pretty bad. Although she watches the Kardashians, so, you know, kind of a, a hit and run. So I trust her to a, an extent <laughs> with my jokes. She's a, she's a tough cookie. She doesn't laugh at anything. She'll watch the Kardashians, but she won't laugh at just anything. So you're going to start a layout in the fall then, Wigwag? That would be cool. I can tell you the bench work would probably be phenomenal because you're obviously an avid woodworker. So, yeah, I would love to see how you approach that from a, like a woodworker standpoint opposed to somebody who's just a, a modeler themselves, right? I'd pay to see that. I'm just kind of show you guys what uh, what I'm doing here. So I didn't do the windows over here yet, but or over here, but. I, Kind of did the roof a little bit, and I did the inside lip as well. Hey, Stormy, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Happy Sunday. Um, details. It's all about the details. These little window frames are crazy, crazy small. The thing I didn't like about this is that, that all the windows were built into um, wall, where a lot of the other kits, you can paint them and then you glue them in. So I like that idea more. Because it's a lot easier to paint these windows if they're not already attached.
right, so just doing uh, the little window. See, I think I should do around the actual windowsill as well, and then just leave the frame, the frame black. Because that will really make the window pop. It's just, it's really small. And I can always go back over it with a, uh, with black paint. Just going to shake this again. I probably have enough time to do the, uh, the windows on the back here. So for upcoming shows, because I haven't mentioned that at all today at all. Um, so today is Sunday. So tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we've got Trackside Mike and we've got James, Dundas Junction Model Railroad. They go live every Monday night and they alternate between channels, the two of them. Uh, tomorrow, I do believe that they, they will be on James's channel. I do believe, I do believe. Um, and if Mike is still in the chat, let me know just as a confirmation that it will be over on James's channel. Either way, you guys should uh, definitely hit that bell notification as a reminder, as a, as a kind reminder that, uh, you know, someone is going live, especially if you enjoy watching their stuff. Uh, just like for me here, if you do enjoy watching, sometimes I do random lives and uh, you want to make sure that you hit that bell notification so that you are alerted when you're Favorite ones go live. But after, after tomorrow, tomorrow being Monday, um, Wednesday is my actual birthday. And I think that, oh yeah, it's a March break. So the kids are home. So I don't know if I'm going to do a live that day. If I do, it'll probably be like midday, most likely. Uh, and I might do a tiny bit of work on the layout. Just to say I did some work on the layout. And, uh, and then Thursday, 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 uh, it's my week for third rail Thursday, which... I still have no idea what's going on yet. Uh, I don't know if anybody's coming by. I don't know if... Well, Mike Mike said there will be cake. But I don't know if it's because I have to go out and get cake. So maybe. I know Wednesday night it's taco night. So that's fun. I always look forward to taco night. Uh, and then, yeah, so Thursday, I don't know if I'm running trains. I don't know if I'm doing some work on the layout, but I've got to do something, right? Got to get some work done. And I've been doing a lot with that yard, uh, redoing things and trying to get things working again, trying to 
breathe new life into it because uh, it's been kind of a pain in the butt. But it will be nice to be able to fill it up with cars and, uh, and whatnot. That way I don't have to, you know, take all my cars off the layout, you know, and then switch them out with a whole bunch of other cars and, and whatnot. I can kind of either do like a mixed, mixed freight on the layout, or I can, you know, use certain ones for a longer amount of time, or if I just want to use one, I can just put that a bunch of the other ones in the yard, just to put them away. Then next week, next week being not this Thursday, but the following Thursday, uh, it will be Mark's turn, M&M Rails, on Third Rail Thursday. And uh, I don't know what he has planned, but uh, it's always good. It's always a good time. Hang out. I think he's going to give his final verdict on the SD60 and how his is working out and how good his is and whatnot. And I value his opinion, so I'm really interested to see what he thinks. And there's Tim. There's an alley in your town scene that you're working on. I really want to graffiti it. My birthday gift to you. Um, do I bring it down to you? Do I... Are you coming here? <laughs> how, how does that work? How does that work, Timothy? I thought you wanted to do one of my auto racks. It's fine. It's fine. We'll work something out. Well, I'll get it to you sometime, I think. Damn squeaky chair. The only problem with that, Tim, is that the alley is going to be the best looking section of that entire scene and you won't be able to see it it's in the alley <laughs> it's like the one graffiti artist that was really good did all his work in this area here and everyone else decided to take all the other areas and put garbage all over it <laughs> but I would appreciate that. If you guys missed Tim's stream on Thursday, which was his birthday stream, uh, make sure you go back and watch it. Windows. 
At least all the frames. Well, that one's really dark still. I gotta fix that one. There we go. Okay. Brighten it up a bit. random power outage. I might have missed the random power outage only because my children were being quite vexing. So I might have missed a section and that might have been the power outage. How many industries do you have on your layout? That is a good question. So right now, as it stands, I have a paper mill. I have a beaver lumber, so a lumber mill, or, you know, lumber distribution, I guess. Um, a scrap yard. And I'm going to have a full ethanol plant. That's not in yet. I do have the buildings to do a scrap yard, or not a scrap yard, a, a steel mill, but I do not have the space to do a steel mill. So I'm just saving my steel mill kits for, we'll call it a future endeavor. Um, what else do I have? I have a bakery that I haven't classified as anything yet. And there's a part B to that bakery, which I have as like Pillsbury, which I haven't done anything with yet. Um, that little track that I finally decided what I wanted to do with it, uh, I'm putting, I'm going to put a, like a rail to road gasoline or ethanol stop, I guess, or just distributor. So basically the, uh, gasoline comes in on tank cars and they fill up the trucks and the trucks will go to the local gas stations to fill up. I'm sure I have a few more that I'm totally spacing on, but that's okay. Um, you know, there's obviously there's a also passenger service. So I've got a couple of train stations. It's not much, but it's, uh, you know, it does what it's supposed to do, right? Okay. Last section. Last section, and then that's going to be all good. Well, no, technically there's two more sections. Whatever. This is a big job, you know, like just painting every single little concrete thing like this, you know. That's why I do this live, because it's like, at least I get to talk to somebody while I do this. In 
this case, 20 of you. You guys are probably working on your things right now. What are you guys working on? Did I ask you this earlier? I don't know if I asked you this. I'm sorry if I did not ask you guys what you were working on. I think sometimes I just assume that you're going to tell me. I know a couple of guys mentioned that they were working on stuff. Chris doing his uh, scanning of railroad photos. Uh, Everything Trains Media, how's it going? Um, so this is the this is the paint that I use for doing detail stuff. It's called Citadel Colors, and uh, if you're familiar with Warhammer uh, War Games, you know it's the uh, paint that you can get from Games Workshop or you know other little craft not craft but uh, War Games stores. Um, I grew up using this stuff. It's really good. Um, they've got inks, dyes, um, you know, whole range of different colors. This color here, I'm using base Wraithbone or Wrathbone. That's the name of the color. They have fancy ass names, but it's, you know, it's weird, right? But either way, um, yeah, it's like a bone color, which is, as you can imagine, old concrete, right? It's a color of old concrete. It's not gray and it's not yellow and it's not really tan it's like an i don't know you know what i'm talking about and then uh for other colors uh throughout so i did i'll give you a recap actually so after building it right you build it i prime the thing with gray paint uh i usually either use black or white in this case i use black um yeah, and it's just a uh, what is it called? Matte finish. So it's very dull and uh, it goes on very, very well. And it's good for plastics. So then after I did the black, I use these. So these I get from the dollar store because that's super cheap. And it's just acrylic paint, uh, many different colors. And they even change up their color system every so often. Uh, but I never really use the color as it is, uh, except obviously white is white and black is this black. Yeah, black as black. But even colors like uh, this one here. So the I used a deep red, but then I had mixed in some white and a few other things. And that's the color I got, the, the red. So it's like a red brick. Right. So I brushed that on over top of the black. Then see that middle storefront there? That was sea spray. So it's like a greenish blue, greenish gray. It's a greenish gray, I think. And then I think I mixed in a little bit of white. Yeah, I put a, I lightened it up even further than that. And uh, I got the it's almost like a baby. It looks baby bluish, but it's, uh, you know, same thing with the yellow on uh, the end here. I started with a daffodil yellow, but then I made it way lighter because I didn't like how bright it was. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's normally what I do. Also with the red, the deep red, I added a few colors to it and uh, it came out this color here it's like a um it's almost like a reddish purple or a brownish purple so you can see obviously separating the buildings right like the one brick building here and then another those two the same but uh yeah there's many different ways you can do this this is just how i'm doing it and, uh, you know, once the whole thing is black, you can kind of pick out little things and say, well, okay, this is the color that this should be. And this is the color that should be. And you just kind of pick away at it and do little things here and there just to kind of bring it all together. 
And that's what <laughs> and that's what I'm doing here now, where I'm just doing all the little concrete ledges right above and right below each windowsill, which let me tell you is aggravating because <laughs> there's so many. Okay. We're, we're almost done though. We're almost done. The problem with that, Anthony, is that like even my ore cars, right? I've got, how many do I have now? I have over 30 ore cars. So if I put all 30 ore cars in my yard, it'll probably take up two full tracks. Even though it's a small car, it takes up a large amount of space with the fact that I've got a lot. And then with my cylindrical hoppers, which are a normal size, I have about 15 or 16 with more on the way. And right now I could probably fit uh, one and a half of those tracks full. Or with my five auto racks, I can probably fill one track with my five auto racks. So I'm going to have six tracks there, but will I use them completely? Probably not. Um, I do want to leave some space so that I can do like a maintenance facility or even have like a, a track for just locomotives to sit. And I would even where they're full of just go transit stuff, six tracks, six locomotives with a whole bunch of cars trailing behind each one. And they're all just lined up there on the tracks and then just, yeah, take a photo of that. Even though I only have four right now, still. I just think it would be really neat to do that. But it'll allow me to actually um, do switching in that yard section as well. Like I can use one track just to build a train, basically. Or I can uh, cut cars as they come in and I don't know. I want to try different operation type things, but I'm more focused on trying to get everything built first, you know. I wish I had space for a hidden yard. Um, like the guys always say, you know, put a hole in the wall and then I've got a workshop on the other side of one of those walls that <laughs> I could totally put a full, full yard in there, full yard. It's over, it's well over 10 feet long. Will I do that, though? Probably not. But it's something that, again, the, you know, these are all the things that you learn, you know, throughout doing all this. And, you know, in the future, if I go to make another layout, hidden staging yard will definitely be something that I would consider. I never thought I needed one. And then now looking at the amount of stock that I have, yeah, I kind of feel like I need one now. Yeah, I saw I saw your building kits there. I do like the UPS. Uh, the UPS is really nice. And it looks like it, you know, doesn't take up much space either. And uh, I've got the modern Dairy Queen opposed to the uh, the classic. 
that was uh, pretty decent and fun to build. Yeah, my yard is basically <laughs> on, on the wall. On the wall and in my display case. Telling you though, if I had enough room, I would build the whole Union Station. Like, uh, oh, did in a scale. Hey, Bob. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Still at it here. Yeah. I tried to get on and Take it, you're back to home catch now? that one little. Well, I'm back in my brother's place right now. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, there was. I'm I did, was trying more. to catch. I was trying to. I just about. I was just trying to find the link to try and get on in time, but I. Uh, wasn't able to get on quickly enough to try and catch uh, the peddler to come back, the peddler freight. But uh, I was able to, I put it together there and I just uploaded a video of it. What did we, uh, what did we miss? Uh, it was just CN591, two Jeeps. Oh, nice. Still. Yeah. Uh, I caught it this morning with 68 axles going through, and then on the way back it had 56. So it just did a drop and then came back. Oh, neat. So yeah, since it was almost about time, I thought I'd come on on there just before uh, you finish up your live stream and all that, just to say hey. Since usually I'm your partner in crime for Sunday. <laughs> all good. Yeah, it's one of those days where you're just just chilling, just hanging out, and you know, working on kits. So. Yeah, I dinged my uh, tripod. Uh oh. How'd you ding your tripod? Well, I was trying to do a quick setup, and what happened was I accidentally closed the door on one of my legs. Uh oh. So I dented the leg. Yeah. No, the leg still works and all. It's just dented a little bit. Dang. <laughs> oh, I got a reef on the leg to actually pull it out now. Oh, man. It's not perfect anymore. <laughs> no, no. She's she, 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 <laughs> Oh, well. Yeah. I did. It happened. But, yeah. It happened. You missed. Steph was on. She was, uh, she was in the chat there. Oh. Yeah, she was on break. <laughs> oh, what was she saying? Oh, I was trying not to talk about things that I want to buy. So <laughs> I was telling everybody in the chat to like not tell her what I purchased. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Video still rendering there, so it'll be coming up there soon. Uh, announce the name of the building. 
Uh, yeah, I saw that. Will you be getting the scale trains in April? Um, I I didn't plan on it. the The next set of trains that I'm hoping for would be the Inner Mountain CN Heritage units. So the uh, the BC one, the uh, 100 years of CN and the uh, military unit. Those three specifically. I don't really have uh, any interest in the other ones. Maybe the orange one. I don't know. Just add a bit of color. Do you know the orange one? Uh, what, what the name of that one is? EJ and E. That is the EJ and E. Oh, okay. Yes. So I thought the so, but like I don't want to say it, and then I look stupid. <laughs> well, there's the Wisconsin Central. There's the Grand Trunk. There's a CN unit like that as well, like a normal CN unit. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the EJ and E, the Illinois Central, and the BC Rail. Yeah. Yeah, the BC Rail one's nice. I mean, if I'm ever going to do BC Rail, it's probably going to be, you know, as a heritage. So. Oh, yeah. It's the only way. I, I mean, and plus, it'll run really well with the rest of my ES 44s. So that's why I've got the uh, the Norfolk and Southern. Right? So, yeah. Well, that and it was gifted to me. But other than that, but yeah. <laughs> Clean up time. Clean up time. Okay. Uh, scale trains, my opinion, has the better detail, but Inner Mountain isn't bad. If ever come over, I'll bring my scale trains. Yeah, trains. Uh, their stuff looks really good. I just don't like that their stuff is like over four hundred dollars Canadian. Uh, I'd sooner get the, you know, not necessarily the exact same, but next to, you know, or the closest to at like three hundred. So. Mm. I'm not sure how much it is in the States, but yeah, it's like over $400 here for a scale trains unit. How much did you pay for it? Because, Bubs, you recently got a, a scale trains locomotive, right? Yes. I can't remember how m I don't have the bill on me at hand right now, so I don't remember. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, yeah, they're not cheap. <laughs> but you know what they say? Cheap trains aren't good. Good trains aren't cheap, right? <laughs> That's true. Uh, hey, Ramsey, how's it going? <clears throat> yes, the hobby as a whole is expensive. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, like I was saying, you know, there's ways to enjoy the hobby without spending, you know, trillions. Although spending trillions on the hobby doesn't sound like a bad thing either. <laughs> so uh say it was about 360 dollars for a dc unit yeah so when when a dc locomotive is over i want to say 200 to 250 that's yeah. a bit much i'm gonna turn my camera this way see if the uh lights a little better hang on there we go like when i started in the hobby <clears throat> Well, started back because I was doing it when I was little. But when I was purchasing as much as I do now, uh, DC locomotives would run you about $80, $90 for a DC unit. You know, um, if it was over 100 like 120 130 150 you know it was a locomotive that, you know, you couldn't just go out and find, right? Yeah. You were paying a little bit more for the the rarity of it, and then also it was never available in DCC and Sound to begin with, so you would all, always have to spend that extra hundo to upgrade it. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, when I bought my GP thirty eight dash two, my first ever locomotive, I got it for one eighty, my first Genesis, mm -hmm. and this Genesis. was back in twenty twelve. Twenty twelve, yeah. Twenty twelve, twenty thirteen. And that was a Canadian price. Yeah. Yeah, I think my first Genesis was a 
It was a DC unit, and I think I paid about two fifty for it. Hmm. Uh, it was when Athern started doing the uh, the Go Transit GP forties. Yep. Yeah, and then the thing fried, and none of the uh, decoders that I could find for it would work. So I was not thrilled with that. That sucks. <sighs> yeah. I don't know if that was me or that was the locomotive. I have no idea still, but I don't think I've ever tried to do my own DCC stuff <laughs> since then. So. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it happens, right? Trial and error. Yep. Even with the um, passenger cars, like the Super Continentals that Rapido was putting like seven, eight years ago, you know, you're looking at about what seventy five dollars a car? I think they're around sixty. Actually, I think they were around fifty bucks a car at the time. It depends on the car. Like I remember buying like the O and R ones for about sixty five, seventy dollars a piece, uh, and that that was the Super Continentals. I think that the LRCs yeah. of the time were about you know yeah seventy, eighty dollars as well. But now one hundred and fifty dollars a car. It's like, oof. sure, they've come a long way, but man, that's double. It's double. It's literally double now. <laughs> so no, I, yeah, I, I can definitely see everyone's frustration with the paying the prices and whatnot, especially over the last 10 years, everything that, uh, you know, everyone's been through and uh, the economy and whatnot, that definitely doesn't help. So yeah, it was bound to happen, but man, there's going to be a point, like I said, you know, it's just going to become too expensive and everyone's going to enjoy what they have and they probably won't be uh, consuming as much as, uh, as you did in the past. So it's tough, but eventually the price has got to drop, right? That or we got to all make more. <laughs> I told my boss, I'm like, uh, I'm going to need a raise soon. Train prices are going through the roof. So, <laughs> He's like, well, we've got to get you some trains in. I'm like, I guess so. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I, I got a chance to work on the building, which uh, I'm very happy with how it's turning out. And uh, I've got a bit more to do. I think I'll do the wash on it next week. Yeah. And uh, I gotta find. I gotta figure out where I put my grip tape because uh, I still gotta put the. Uh, the grip tape on the roof and then that way i can put the little roof pieces in but hopefully i have my lighting and stuff before then that way i can do the interiors and stuff so okay yeah oh and perry's here hey perry how's it going mm. uh his first lrc cars have a price on the box of 67 dollars yep I bet they didn't squeak as much as the new ones that you paid 150 for. <laughs> I don't remember them being a, a sound car. <laughs> oh, well. And that capacitor, too. Oof. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll call it a week um, or a day, I guess. Has it, has it been a day? Is it, it's been a day. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, we'll be back next week uh, to do some final touches on this. i got to figure out what color to paint this. I have no idea. And uh, yeah, Go with the green. Yeah. Yeah, I think if I do, like, the black and then I do the... Uh, if I make this a little bit darker, the sea spray, it'll almost look like... You know how when things are uh, copper... Uh, or um, like metal, and then eventually over time it turns that greenish color. Yep. Yeah, that would probably be like, uh, if I can get close to that color, it's almost like a dark, darkish, greenish gray that it turns to. I, I would probably do this in that color. That might be uh, an idea. I'll go down to the Parliament buildings and see what color theirs are, and I'll try to color match. Shit with something. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll be over on. I'm and I'm pretty sure. I don't know. If, I think Mark Mike's gone, but 
Uh, we'll be over on James's channel tomorrow, so make sure to uh, set your notifications uh, and hit the little bell button to uh, let you know when he goes live, but it's normally 7, 7 p.m. And uh, then we'll be back here on th for uh, Third Rail Thursday. And then, yeah, whatever happens. <laughs> but uh, thank you, everybody, we'll never for... You never know. You, you don't know. But you have to show up in order to know, right? That, that, exactly. That's it. <laughs> it sells itself. It's trains. There you go. <laughs> it is. And uh, yeah, thanks for going trackside for us there, being the correspondent in the field. Uh, and it was a via, so yeah, uh, it works. There's levels, and it worked on every single level. So I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate you going out. And yeah. In 20 degrees snow uphill both ways, just to catch a via for me. <laughs> I appreciate that. No problem. I was trying to catch that CN, uh, trying to get a live CN for you guys, but I was having issues with hookup. But anytime. And next weekend, well, it's our layout uh, session in Ottawa, so. That's true. I have to stop by. Perry, are you going next weekend? I don't think Mark's still in the chat. Well, I'll just I'll text him and I'll see if he's going. I might Perry I might come out and see time. you guys on Saturday. Perry is going. Okay, we'll, yeah. we'll go hang out with Perry and run some trains and maybe we'll do a live or something. I know that the uh, reception is cruddy, but either way, we'll try something. But uh, yeah, thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next week. Uh, do your train thing. Make sure you run trains. Run run a train today. And uh, and let us know. Let us know how it is. <laughs> Everybody have a good week. Have a good one, guys.